then it can simply spit back what it's got yeah. and the, the system can manage arranging the design. That's the design. Okay. That's exactly the design. So has to rank right. So that we have to be clear that if we're bringing other people rather than open the rest of the picture, they're going to have to render the data out of an account. All the shared cloud record does is give all of the raw data from the encounters, and it's up to the receiving end to synthesize that. Unless there's another model, and where again, this is where the CCD and, and standard documents like this come into play. You could have those data transformed into documents that can also be available for downloading, and that can get a, a job of the shared software to do above and beyond just purchasing the data. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's what it's Yeah. So the, the question I was going to ask is that what, uh, what do we have to consider as a durable transaction? So if there's three different forms, if for whatever reason something gets interrupted and one of those goes up and the other two don't. Do we have some mechanism that says, I don't know, those other two are going to follow because my durable transaction is all three. Yeah. So if I am going to send them one at a time, I have to make sure if I'm interrupted in the middle, I finish it off. Yeah. Once it once it once it completes a form, then it can write the database. And the question is, when does the phone back up to mom, the you know, mothership? that I've done a bunch of these things. Do I do it after every form I submit, or do I do it when I'm done with the visit? Well, and, it's and durable in the local system once they, once they submit that single form. It's durable in the clinic system once they say, I finished this form and I submit it. So you know what? There's no reason for the shared health record to be more durable than the source of the system. So it's not fine. Yeah. If they think they have a crash on the client yeah. side, I make sure that the forms are rebooting. And the data is going to be inside that local system. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. But I do think, real, real quick, I should reiterate, I think I'm going to write this down. We need to decide when we post back up to the shared health record. Is that the end of the visit? And what you need is to get them to trigger that? Or do we do it every time we get a chunk of information? And how do we keep track of that? Is it the same encounter or different encounters? I know for me, I actually think that it's a little invalid to say those are separate encounters because it's one clinician doing all the same things. It just happens to be broken into different forms. Plus, if we're worried about bandwidth, creating more transactions is not helpful. Okay, so, so, then I don't know if it is. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
the, yeah, the open MRS database, of course, keeps track of those changes. So there's no such thing as deleting something. It's a new record with a, a link to the previous record and an update. So all of that is your The question is, is there an interface to allow them to go and edit the previous summary, right? But I think what we're talking about is the distinction between a view only mode, which is what's here, and a mode where that can be edited. And that's a much bigger ball of wax from a developmental perspective. I guess I'm really asking, that's what the MRS offers. Oh, yeah. You can edit encounters to the cost at home. So we're going to need to reflect that to the shared I mean, if you edit that in content, it doesn't change the original record that it says you. Oh, so you are so showing an incorrect date to somebody with no indication that it's been changed, such as cross off, revised, this is the same thing, correct? I think what I think the, the issue is so someone now checks in for a second visit and they look at the first visit and they say that weight's wrong, it's off by 10 kilograms, it was a mistake. So they go in and edit that, right? But the question is how do we communicate that back to the show off record? So that's really an edit of the previous encounter. So it's a separate message that needs to go up. Right. And, and the, the person might come in the next day and say, whoa. I wrote 106 and I really should have written 16. Yeah, and that needs to reflect that shared health record. And we do believe that the shared health record is not going to override the state of the international record. But the point that's on my mind is we haven't defined a transaction form for that. And so we just need to, and that's something we can do. It's actually not the part. It's like a hard work for you or something. There's a different message type for updating. We're going to need, we're going to need, actually we're going to do, we're going to need an ORC segment. Yeah. There is a way of doing that in OpenMRS. We haven't, we haven't thought through trickling that up to share off records. I think that's probably another one to add. Keep the questions coming, that's the whole point of this, right? Actually, one of the, one of the things that, Just from a messaging standpoint, one of the things that uh, I've seen used before is that if I am posting something up that is supposed to be stored, then I let the HIE assign who with for that message the message ID for that. But if I've got one that needs to be fixed, I tell it the message ID because that's now the message ID that's being um, superseded. There's a link back to that one, but it's now let me split it here. I think the message that was sent was correct, but the data that it had was wrong. So that, that we're not correcting the, mess, the previous message, we're actually correcting the record of the encounter that was reported on the previous one. How do you know which one if you don't send a message and you one you're You have to have the message, that message ID if you're updating. That's the challenge if something came to the scene that we could have messages that we could send out. I've lost the fundamental base form of what it might be. It tells you what you should be like when it happens. We're trying to retain the ability to identify the data in sufficient specificity that we can support corrections. Provisions. I think you're making a pretty strong argument for why you wouldn't send only a summary of data from the shared health record. If you want the source system or the local system to be able to edit the data in the shared health record, then then there needs to be a one-to-one -one mapping of the data in order to just think what might have to be in the XML portion of the CDA. Yeah. Sometimes you don't put them. They seem like housekeeping things, but sometimes the housekeeping things do need to be Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I had a list of that something to go back to. So then the encounter is completed, right? And then mom goes home. Okay. So what happens between that first visit and subsequent visits? There are a couple things that could happen. One, she could have a complication at home, right? In which a shared health or a community health care worker will come and send some kind of an alert message. Is there anything that is being delivered to the community health care workers in between visits? No. Is there a reminder if she's doing her Okay, and where does that come from? 
So rapid SMS keeps track of that internally because of their own protocols. Could you send a PRV frequency message based in the name, based of the this is out, which has actually got no bearing on what our actual is, mm -hmm. but that they are sent to know. The, the trigger for the PRE is, is the community health care worker doing that activity, right? Yeah, they trigger the PRE. What, what, if, what, if the, what if the person forgets to do the PRE? Is there any process for the, the, okay. So is that something that we want to see in there? So if they were seen in a visit, but there's no PRE in Rapid SMS, do we want the Rapid SMS to be notified by Shared health record. You follow what I'm getting at? Especially, the only reason I bring it up is because when I saw the transaction line, the rapid SMS messages, it implies to me they're not necessarily heavy users of it. And so that implies there's a, a more, a greater than 2% chance that they're missing registering for the industry in the outset. Okay. We have to go about, we have to go about the health workers, and that's where rapid SMS people, they say that. Um, the uh, reminders are not as valuable to me if they come at so far in advance when a visit is that, uh, for example, next month you should go and have your visit, whereas they're usually more on top of things than that. So it's, I mean, if, if we were going to do any enhancement, I think that getting it closer to the actual visit time by connecting it somehow to the health center would be more beneficial than generally in your third month or generally in your sixth month, which is the way that it's done right now. So, so there's a, a disagreement between the protocols and rapid SMS and what the community health care workers will need is the schedule. Is that what I'm hearing? No, they said reminders so far in advance that they say that once they talk to it, that it's not usually that. Right, but the algorithm could be written to where it's more juxtaposed against what they actually do, right? Yeah. What they're supposed to do? Well, yeah, you still have to remind them in advance. And so it's how far in advance it could be. Okay. And they don't enter the proper the period, then the schedule is not generated. Well, I guess the, the basic paradigm that I'm hearing here is that Rapid SMS server will be responsible for sending alerts down to the community health care workers. And the triggering event to date is that PRE message that we expect that the community health care worker enters to start. And so I guess, again, my question is, if we're going to give that job to wrap that SMS, do we, do we want to put any checks and balances in place for this round, or do we want to just wait for a subject right now? So two things. One, this is the horse of the course for now. And two, we should anticipate that we would replace that schedule with one that is aware of the shared health record content when this schedule isn't. And the trigger that goes into it is completely decoupled from all the other information that is going through rapid SMS server, but are not decoupled in the shared health record, which would impact the kind of alerting that we want to do with it, the schedule of the round that we should want to do it. The other one I want to put on everybody's uh, radar just because it was reported by the OTAC guys in Ghana that, uh, it, that whatever the natural schedule is that's in rapid SMS doesn't work well when you don't find out what was trained until quite late. That ended up doing some kooky things in the schedule because it wasn't doing any calculations correctly. And they did. They don't space penalties for come after four months until the first visit. We now can only ever get through this. They just dropped it. They don't schedule space yet. Yeah, it was a case study, but it was a little gotcha. And it's not the same thing with agencies. We should be involved in the best thing. A couple more comments. Uh, the question. Uh, assuming that is free, and that's the to the the This is the But that's the system involved to smart phones on the So it's not going to be the same as it is for the smart phones. Uh, the smart phones are going to be the same as the smart phones. The smart phones are going to be the same as the smart phones. The smart phones are so what you're asking is free SMS transactions for these people. SMS is really the first way. Right, right. But that's a good smartphone applications, for example. Um, Letting them have a 
Association of Local Town Hall Street and Hill to study the operators. So, well, we could the Ministry of Health and Sway the Ministry of ICT to uh, build in a, um, a universal service obligation which could uh, mandate uh, free service for them? Well, um, I'll say we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> but for now, uh, we managed to, uh, to bring down the cost of SMS. So we got a very, very high subsidy SMS rate. And that should be called as well because we have uh, IPR based uh, applications. So we have uh, people sending in this, uh, reports using IPR. So those are the phone calls. Those ads have also been heavily subsidized. I mean, the SMS will come down to like three francs. Uh, SMS, which I think normally uh, the, the SMS is around 15 francs. Yeah, I think it's only 15 francs, but we've got it down to 3 francs. So we, we negotiate with the telecoms as well. So I'm hoping that when we get that time, we will be able to finish it. I need you to talk to AT&T in the US. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. It, it sounds like the shared health record is going to know about many pregnancies that rapid SMS does not. I'm worried about that. It's and it seems so like we ought to take advantage of, try to find a way of taking advantage of that. This is where the clinical value starts to show up, right? right? It's this kind of stuff. And at, at present, we do have at least rudimentary decision support capabilities in open MRS, but it is otherwise a glaring omission in our architecture that we don't have a workflow. So I think at phase one, we might be well served by having an open MRS capability. If that ends up, you know, when we're all set to build, if that's what we're going to go through uh, in phase one, it, it does have rudimentary capabilities that can be leveraged or strengthened or whatever, but a workflow. Yeah, so so let's just step back a little bit and remind ourselves about what would a what would a community health care worker be empowered to actually do? And it sounds like the first thing that we said was was that they would want to make sure that people are coming into clinic on routine schedule and they have their four visits. That's one thing. What other things would they be empowered to do? What would, what would we want to tell them about other than coming into business? Also, we haven't talked about right now the whole um, issue of referrals. We talked about the follow up person for that. I'm going to explain the cause of that. So, if you go into a health center and uh, you're, both, you're pregnant and you're routine and she don't visit, let's say your blood pressure is a little bit high, uh, they don't actually have the district to test your urine there, so what they'll tell you if they're concerned is to go to the hospital for a test. You actually go to the routine intake of the hospital. No one there is expecting you to come. They'll come as one with a piece of paper, but uh, the, we don't have a really good way of uh, following that referral back and forth. So the solution that we had proposed to using this was um, one of the, one of the um, forms that you can fill out is a for a referral on that. On that is Open MRS. And uh, that will go up to shared health record. And there's an idea of its um, urgency. So if, if it's urgent, it's to be done within we we just pick in two or three days, and it's uh, as soon as possible within five days. And so if our query would run against the shared health record, we'll the ones that are still in that after three days. The intent is that when a patient goes to the hospital, the person looking at that record will indicate that they have arrived for that uh, visit. They don't have, we didn't necessarily talk about them entering the data. That would be nice. But we didn't have a mechanism to do that before, but I think it would be a value. And so, come on, I'm going to give another part. If, uh, if that visit or referral is not acknowledged as being completed after three days, for example, the uh, rapid essence or the shared health record should generate a reminder or another term for rapid that will look rapid SMS. Well done. We talked about the link to that rapid SMS server. Send an SMS message to the community health worker to say this woman was supposed to go for a consultation and ask them to go check on her. To which she could reply, oh, I talked to you, know, if she did it or whatever. So that was a follow up. There was also a, a secondary um, notification of an MRS. So if she shows up again for a visit and hasn't had a consult, she will be able to 
so the community healthcare worker has an additional role in making sure that something that was prescribed in the clinic is completed. That's not necessarily the case right now. Sometimes the clinic does share information with community health workers saying, you know, she will home to make sure she, she has the event and it's in the right pathway. Yeah. I totally share sure that workflow. Yes. I think what I heard you say is that the clinic says this person needs to be seen in the hospital for whatever reason. And if it doesn't happen within three days, the community health workers job to say why why the hell didn't she go right now. But that's the best Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That could be a function of the community yes. health worker yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a check some check and balance to something that was prescribed in a clinic. Right. Okay. That's another use. Are there any other besides that? Are there anything that we would want to remind the, the community health care worker about besides those things? Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't understand the skill sets and the expertise that they have and what they would be able to be reliably kind of counted upon. So get into the clinic or get into the clinic because we said that you need to go into the clinic. So there are two reasons why you want basically the community health worker to get someone into either the clinic or the district hospital essentially. Is that right? We can we can talk about other reminders in a second, but I just want to make sure that we're doing the community health worker part first. So, so yeah, there is opportunity, we've talked about this before, but we never actually, I think of that as well for this initial piece, but the whole notion of counting referrals, you go back from the hospital to the health center, or from the health center to the community health worker, to say there is this issue, just telling a community health worker that the woman's last cystolic blood pressure is 160, but we not think of a community health worker. And so it needs to come along with the sort of instruction list that says, would you please check on her by not according to this protocol? We've not talked about doing that because it was uh, sort of extended the scope of this project. Those are the opportunities to be able to use the data we have to repair. And so that would, the clinic, just to make sure I'm, I'm sorry, you can say there's like some of reiterate. So the clinic or the district hospital would communicate something back to the community health care worker for them to follow up on. Not necessarily a visit, but some kind of a health concern they could have a dual role in helping um, that, take care. Yes, that's feasible and probably would be beneficial, but you have to tell them what to look for. It's not just the symptoms and... You know, and so do we have a list of the circumstances? The list of the circumstances no, that... We, as far as I've understood, we've just discussed it, but this is not... Okay, so for the CHW... That's the right answer. Do you want to know? Well, no, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to lay out the landscape here. So the CHW could do three things. They could remind them about the routine appointments that are already scheduled. They could remind them about special visits, probably either to a clinic or to a district hospital. And they can be given alerts about things that other environments um, saw that they need to be co-supportive in in between visits. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, let me ask uh, DDF, what did they remind us to be concerned For actually, in our business of sending the best type of reminders, it's then to remind us to remind the patient to go for the visit. Uh, also, remind uh, for expect delivery day, and uh, also remind supervisors, not the community local supervisors, about those who talk about that are not active. That are not active reporting. Okay, so I just wanted to add us to know that those reminders already exist in the SMO for our business. Uh, we'll see that there will be another potential reminder that we have. Yeah, I think there are there are three main groups, and I'll just reiterate again. One of them is under SMS now, two of them are. The one that is done is well, we know that they're pregnant, and there's a schedule of visits that need to be adhered to, and so the system automatically, based on just date criteria, says they need another visit, right? right? The second kind is a clinician in either a hospital or um, a, a clinic said that they need to see a, have, 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 have a special visit. And, oh, by the way, it's been three or four days, and they haven't been, so can you help can you make sure they get into the special non-routine visit? Mm, that means the reminder is actually not automated. This is triggered by the clinician himself. Right. So this is something that the shared health record would be aware of. 
and, it, and the event engine at the level of the health information exchange would say, they haven't, they haven't completed that visit yet. Community health care worker, can you find out what the next going on? That's, I think, the second example you gave. That's, that's another kind of alert that the CHW can get. The third kind is, here's a, here's a circumstance as a clinician that I saw in the clinic that I think you could help me with in between visits. Like, for example, um, um, preeclampsia. And there are, some, there are some things that they can do in terms of their behavior and their lifestyle in between visits that the community health care worker needs to be aware of to be supportive in between the visits. And so it would be the clinic sending information down saying, hey, community health care worker, this is going on. Do a little bit of detailing around this. Help them in between visits. Does that make sense? Down to the more complex. Exactly. Right. And the fact that it is a human trigger to my job. It's not automated, you can set it in the state. Uh, it, uh, the doctors have to do their part to actually send that to China. Secondly, uh, the other complex part of it is that it's not the same reminder. It's it varies between from case to case. I mean, somebody has to type something, or uh, is it pre configured and is a reminder about specific things? You get what I mean? Of course, those friends are not really 
highest risk to the pregnancy. So they are like, okay, high risk and maybe high risk one, high risk two, high risk three. And I think those risks are actually, we do have that list of risks, right? Yeah, so we we'll say the budget will be high risk one, two, three. Yeah. We, we need to move forward a little bit here, so let's kind of wrap this up. But Derek, I know you've been patient, and then maybe we can get you this to wrap it up. So one of the things that we're moving we well, well certified is just the concept of generic learning. And right now, our has a nice about some logic, and it, it creates local queue when it uses that local queue. And one of the things that might be a uh, sound that help to us is to say how rapid SNS gets its queue from the HIV, because now all kinds of things, including the existing you know, reminders logic, are in the HIV, but also other logic that are driven off the content that's but the SHR is now aware of other things that we can know about the uh, uh, about the patient. The other thing that it provides us is about the HIE, we've got all of our registries to swap that phone numbers for facilities. If I do register somebody, it's an inquiry I prefer. It sets the table for the future ability to alert all kinds of other people who aren't seeing studies. The fact that we've moved it out there gives us the capability that until we move it out there, we won't have. And it's not a significant approach because it always works on q &A. We actually just talked about three different things. We have actually four. The fourth one is that the uh, community health broker sends a piece of information, so she has a finding already. It, it's what we then want, that it matches that against the health record, and then does that general alert that says she needs to go to the hospital or whatever. So based on a, a community health worker initiated observation, it matches it up and it tells her what to do, which is different than the blanket uh, go look for these problems. It sounds like um, number number three and number four, whether they enter something or um, there's an external something from a shared health record, I think what we're thinking is probably right in that just labeling them high risk, that might be sufficient. For, for community health workers, if you're sending women in for a great plan, say, unexpectedly, uh, what's the high risk and what she do about being very different than if I'm home with a low line placenta no or a GP or something? So, I mean, apart from just telling them to go to the hospital, sometimes it's nice to say, please observe her every day to see so if she does it. Doesn't doesn't be able to get the uh, so, do you know, have the list of highest? Okay. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, oh, yeah. So, and I think the greatest part has no process. Yeah, I think, I think the question is, what, where the detailing happens? Are you imagining the detailing happens for what you present? Or are you imagining that the community healthcare workers are broadly kind of trained about high risk? And then just identifying that they're high risk puts them into that protocol that they've been trained on MOTS, right? Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. And so I think the ambiguity is what's the quality of the high risk training against what you're going to be questioning a little bit. Um, but I think what you're generally saying, Richard, is that. To be a community health worker, you're trained about high risk pregnancy as part of the process. Correct. And just to trigger to them that they are in that category will get them to think about approaching that person That's against what they've been trained to do. Yes. I mean, the one thing that you listed uh, is probably a possibility to the university, but I think it's most of the uh, who have been using the business for over a year now for the last time. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. It, it just a bit, it, it's not some community health workers are all the size of this, but there's wide variability in this system. And so we have no control of that. Yeah, they have to be able to assist them with additional pieces. Yeah. And one way you could do that is by, like, they have these other sheets for things. They could, you could say that everyone's high risk, and you could say they're high risk because this. And then when they go to see the person, then they can go and look in the in the yeah. templates and follow yeah, that part. It's obviously harder to try to start training them into other individuals to see how it's even even reporting. So we already trained them. So I think I would rather maintain the existing um, program, which is you know the areas that we have identified, and uh, what we can do in addition, which is uh, something that is of off uh, the health promotion changes to send those reminders at least alongside the referral, capture referrals. And this, the one that you, you um, 
current chapter for CG or current chapter for CG is Larry Barkbatch, House 1 or House 2 or 3. So we, our heads and messages do not send that this message to the community health work yeah. right now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, that kind of uh, recent message is okay, I understand the very, but the uh, reality lesson is when someone is suspected to be risky, uh, we just trigger a rat based on the risk code we have detected from the message we have sent, for example. And it is the same thing we are going to do with uh, the, we are expected to do with the shared health because once you get uh, a risk message. We try to process that risk message, see what uh, appropriate message we can send uh, for the good workers, for uh, the health center, and even for uh, the ambulance driver as a uh, business actually uh, operating. For the same concept. Uh, on how progress is working now is what uh, we are also see how we can uh, we can try to to because things are reflecting from the child corporate uh, we are going to have more like uh, some information that we don't have uh, and we cannot get from the group so in that case we need to push that information into the community so that uh, they can see how they can constantly follow up the patients uh, in the village. Right. I think we should move forward, but I think this has been really helpful for me at least because there are two main kind of things that we would want to give as advice to the community health care worker. One is go in either for a scheduled or unscheduled visit, and then the other is pay attention to this concern. And that can be driven by something that they've identified or something that the clinic has identified. And I think those are details, right? But I think there are two main kind of pathways. And I think we maybe need to get together with you in terms of where that work is being done, whether it's being done or at the SMS side, we've done it at an event engine. And when we send those events, where, you know, how do you want to receive those? Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's. We can, we can take it as a separate tack. I've, I've written down all that, and I'll get that reflected somewhere as a, in a message to you at some point. So that's CHWs. So their main job is once they have identified a pregnant mother, is to make sure they're going into their visits, and that if there's something that they're a specific risk for, to be a, a helpful participant in between those visits. Is that your understanding? Yeah, and uh, basically, regulation is uh, when, for example, we have reminded the good to go to tell uh, the pregnant uh, mother to go for the event and to visit. And we still uh, sending the same reminder until the good doctor is going to respond that and their visit has been attended to. So, and uh, from the childhood, I think those days reminders, uh, as uh, I have implemented already uh, amongst of this. Uh, uh, I think for me, when we receive uh, a reminder, and a uh, reminder from the child group, we don't uh, uh, counter it as the fair, the past, the, we just push the message to the community, to, to the community worker, and we, we are not specific on which uh, who is the second or the third, something like that. Well, imagine a world where the shared health worker tells you that they went to a visit and see so you no longer have to get that information from the community health care worker. So I think that's where we're at, right? Right now, you're operating in a small loop based upon the information that you only get from community health care workers. And I think in the future, you'll be informed more from other clinical environments as well directly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. So that's another, once again, value. Can we move forward or do we have more questions? Good Need to generate um, alerts or reminders for things like ATCT? Um, I, don't, I don't know where we're at with that. So, please, the thing with ATCT, so um, all except two of the sites that were going live like, already have uh, ATCT services um, that they have uh, on site. And so, the, we could do the same thing at that as another kind of referral, although they all had good systems in place. 
to um, acknowledge the transfer the, for actually there is a little bit of a misunderstanding of NBC. They consider themselves providing the NBC to care. They're considered that to the woman. Somebody else prescribes ARDs in the HIV So the people that prescribe the ARDs um, need to know that she's coming. They, they found that she was actually located physically in the same building and the HIV test initially on the woman that's done as part of her first antenatal visit. And so they felt they had a good way to do this, but it's absolutely the same as referrals. Since they're bringing to hospital, we could have referred out of that to the PMTCT care. It's and not in that same way. Is, is PMTCT or Blacks is a three drug or one drug or actually two? I think it's three. Okay, so they get full heart. It's, it's on all the heart. Okay. So what would there was a talent could be in your mind between the healthcare workers and those over there and then they need to go in for a aren't they getting that PMTCT visit stuff happening at the same time they come in for their engineering visit? So they're treated for a pregnancy at the same time they come in for their engineering visit, yeah. but they're treated for, for medications is separate. So what happens is on the first visit, they come with their partner and they're both tested at very, very high testing rate here. It's in, in excess of nine six.